Hello everyone and welcome to episode 11. I'm Gabe and today we will be challenging the flying type gym and meeting our very first evolution. But first, a quick recap. In the last episode, you traveled through Mayo Cave with Professor Ginkgo and stopped some Team Arc grunts from collecting a mysterious stone. Afterwards, you were able to continue along Route 5 all the way to Per Marina. A series of pop-up buildings have been built at various levels along the cliff face. Down below, a dock is crowded with small boats. And atop the highest cliff, you see the Flying Type Research Building. A helpful researcher nearby explains that Bree, the Flying Type Head Researcher, is currently studying Pokémon in there. But you are welcome to challenge her if you can make it all the way to the top of the building. Ah yes, we've got another fun, puzzly setup to overcome. Gargantuan fans create strong gusts of wind that crisscross every which way across the arena, with various flying Pokémon deftly maneuvering through their currents. Looking overhead, you spot Bree standing on the highest platform. Other platforms, stairs, and ladders seem to lead up there, but it doesn't take long before a fan blows you off a platform. You fall towards the center of the floor where an updraft from a massive fan softens your fall. Looking around, you see that this will take a bit more thought. By strategically reaching different platforms, turning on and off various fans, and using gusts of air to make daring jumps between platforms, you start to make progress upwards. The occasional wild Pokémon and trainer stand in your way as you climb farther up, but you eventually come face to face with Bree, the flying type head researcher. Good to see you made the climb. Gorgeous view, don't you think? You've certainly mastered any fear of heights to get here, but let's see if you know how to deal with my flying type Pokémon. Bree leads with Azdazkite. The typing is tough to deal with, flying electric. But eventually, some of your Ice-type Pokémon are able to take it down. And next, she brings out a new addition to the existing Fossil Pokémon. I always thought it was strange that Aerodactyl didn't have a pre-evolution like the other Fossil Pokémon. Now, I know that that was Gen 1 and they didn't have all their frameworks figured out then, so a single-stage Fossil was totally okay. But I want Aerodactyl to be on a similar footing as the rest of the Fossil Pokémon. And that means it gets a pre-evolution. Now, because of the lore behind Mega Aerodactyl, it actually made sense for this line to keep the rock typing. So I ended up pulling in some influences from the Mega design. Simplifying Aerodactyl wasn't particularly difficult. It was mainly about finding the right head adornment and luckily there is a plethora of bizarre beaks and head crests among pterosaurs to choose from. The eyebrows were a late addition as the head still felt pretty lacking. But we'll have even more fun when we do Primal Aerodactyl, as I always felt that Mega Aerodactyl was one of those more clunky and over-designed Mega Evolutions. And it, you know, it deserves something better. But anyway, this is Stalactyl. The Lost Fossil Pokémon This flying Pokémon's innate rock typing once complicated the revival process. Its evolution, Aerodactyl, has been known for many years, but Stalactyl has only recently been successfully revived. They are fearless and aggressive, but their delicate wings make them quite frail. Stalactyl enjoy perching on trainer's shoulders, but be wary as they are surprisingly heavy. Its ability is Rock Head, and that protects the Pokémon from recoil damage, and that makes sense. It has these big rocky protrusions on its beak. You are able to defeat Stalactyl, and thankfully, at this point in your adventure, it wasn't a full Aerodactyl. Next, she brings out another fossil Pokémon. In fact, this happens to be my favorite of the fossil Pokémon, Little Archon. I knew that we were going to do two things with the Archon line. One redo the color palette. Even though I love this line, I can admit that the colors are a little much. And two, 
pull in more inspiration from early birds. In particular, because of Archaeops' four wings when it evolves, this will be inspired by Microraptor. I knew that I needed to bring the feathers farther down Archon's legs to hint towards it getting a set of back wings, along with diminished feathers on its arms to show that it isn't a true flyer just yet. The other wonderful thing about Microraptor is that we have a pretty good idea what color it was. By examining fossilized feather microstructures, paleontologists were able to determine that Microraptors had dark blue-black feathers, likely with a slight iridescent sheen to them. Not dissimilar to some modern birds. I decided to boost the blue a bit so that the design doesn't read too dark, I also removed the visible teeth in favor of a more beak-like mouth. Oh, and for the colors of the beak and belly, well, that comes from its kind of tricky typing. Anyway, here is Primal Archon, the first bird Pokemon. Primal Archon's arms are held out while they run at high speeds so that their short feathers can help them maintain balance. They are also expert climbers and can be seen scaling sheer cliffs and tall trees across the region. Their confidence is only broken when they fall from great heights and flail their arms wildly to slow their descent. Its ability is something I'm calling Optimist, which is the inverse of their normal ability, Defeatist. So, when the HP drops below 50%, its attack and special attack stats are raised by 25%. And because of this Archon and Archaeops, their stats actually won't be raised the way they normally are. They'll actually be the same as all the other fossil Pokémon. It seems particularly unfair for Bree to have a pure ground type as a flying specialist, but, you know, I love throwing curveballs like this at you. Of course, you adapt and take it down. Lastly, Bree calls out her ace. All right, it is time for our first new evolution. Flying isn't the most requested Eevee, but we'll be getting through all the new types eventually, and this will be a great place to start. Now, I knew that I wanted this evolution to be in a floating pose, but I actually changed its method of flight last minute. Originally, it was going to have a massive, poofy tail that kept it aloft like a air balloon. Alas, I was just really struggling to get it to work with the other proportions. Luckily, if you watched our last video where I created new bug types, you would know that I was able to reuse that concept in the Raccoon design. As far as figuring out our evolution's method of flight, I knew that I wanted it to be a part of the tail, as I've seen too many flying type evolutions where the ears just get super big and turn into wings. I mean, I'm all for wing ears, but I didn't want them to be any bigger than the other Eeveelution ears. So, I eventually landed on this swirling twister tail. I imagine that it's able to spin its tail to create constant lift so that it can kind of lazily float around. Colors were straightforward, though I did have fun making the shiny colors look like a storm cloud. Anyway, this is Loftion, the twister tail Pokemon. The cloud-soft fur of Loftian's swirling tail is thought to aid it in generating tremendous amounts of lift. Though not a particularly fast flyer, this easy-going Pokémon can float through the air without any effort at all. Loftian have been known to doze off while their tails continue to spin, sometimes leading to them waking from their slumber far from where they initially fell asleep. Its ability is unburdened, so that raises the Pokémon's speed stat when a held item is used. And Loftion is a powerhouse. It's not particularly fast, but it is extremely bulky, and it takes a while for you to take it down. Very well done! First, that other research assistant beats me, and now you? The professor picked some talented assistants. I just have to reward you. First, give me your ID badge. She taps her ID badge against yours, and you see the flying type icon appear on it. But also, I want to give you this. It's another Pokeride signal. Use this, and my Loftion will happily fly you wherever you need to go. Loftion can only take you to places you've already been, but it sure beats walking. You could even get back to Salur City. 
and rather than letting you climb all the way back down, she hip checks you off the platform, where you are caught by the center fan's upward gust. You leave the research center and make your way down to the dock. You inquire about using a boat to continue north, but it seems that all of the boats are currently being used at the moment. Curious what flying will be like, you use your new pokey ride signal and Loftian carries you away. Yes, this is our fun fly poker ride. I really love how silly some of the harnesses and whatnot are for other pokey rides, and I wanted to ramp that up a bit. I immediately imagined a seat reminiscent of fair swing ride things, so this will have you traveling in style, making it a piece of cake to backtrack. The view from up high is truly gorgeous as you leisurely ride all the way back to Salur City. You revisit the Evolution Research Lab and are excited to find that your new Level 3 access code lets you into a new room where you can purchase potential evolution items. Some of these you are already familiar with as evolution methods. The water, thunder, fire, dawn, dusk, leaf, and ice stones, along with some rarer evolution items like the metal coat and dragon scale. There are also a number of items that you've seen before, but you didn't realize that they could trigger any type of evolution, such as the normal gem, the pink scarf, black belt, toxic orb, spell tag, and a bunch of others. Lastly, there's a bunch of items that appear to be just old discarded junk. You see a tattered lampshade, a cracked crystal ball, an old box of matches, a folding fan that's all torn up, and a cracked potted plant. You're free to pick up as many of them as you want, and I'm curious if you can predict what Pokémon may evolve with any of these evolution items. I would love to hear your predictions down in the comments below. I will confirm any that you happen to get right. Now the drawbridge to the north of Salur City is still up, but you are excited to see that the restricted gate to the east is waiting to be opened by your new access code. But you'll make your way through Route 6 in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on today's episode, especially what you think the evolution items are for. And a great big thank you to Bree for being our flying type head researcher. Fun fact, Bree is a pilot herself. And when I asked her if I could do any kind of plug or shout out for her, she said she wanted me to mention Women in Aviation International. I'll leave a link in the description for them, but they are a wonderful organization that encourages women into the various aviation fields. They're cool, Bree is cool, and with that, I'll see you in episode 12. Bye.